Uh, so this week, finally, we will start something more fun. Uh, it, uh, it took time, uh, but we needed to work on the basic principles in design. And we will keep repeating these things, but uh, the, the, the fun part is now we will be able to uh, work on lo laws of new set of uh, problems. So we, we will start with an example and I will start with uh, how we organize our data and then how we reflect the data organization uh, to function template and then we will do some more exercises. So, so the topic is uh, self-referential data and how it is related to recursion. Okay, so of course you can start doing recursion uh, in other domains, but we will particularly look at how data organization is related to the function. Uh, so we are, we, because in this part, until uh, a couple of more lectures, we are focusing on structural recursion, which means we focus on data structure and examine data structure. If data structure is itself a self-referential data, we will see how it re is reflec reflected on its uh, uh, recursion uh, uh, functions, on the function which uses those data structures. So let's start with an example, because it's important to understand how we organize our data and how we uh, come up with a template with this data. So let's say we want to somehow uh, keep and represent our data in programming domain. And if you, let's say we, we want to keep the scores of the students, whatever the score is. So if, if you want to write a function which just works on a sim, single number, which is a score, how would you represent this variable as an input? With, with a number. So your score would be just a number. Then you would represent your score just with a number. Then for instance, something like that would be one, one, one of the numbers and uh, that will be enough to work on that. So the thing is, now we are, let's say we are constrained to use only one input. Uh, which uh, those, the, you cannot use more than one input. So now if you have two students with two scores, somehow you want to compare them or whatever reason. And how would you, uh, what kind of data structure would you come up uh, to represent two numbers at the same time together? So then you need to come up with a structure. So uh, that means you will design a simple data structure where you could keep uh, uh, the, 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 the things you would have. Like we would, at this time we would have, uh, like let's say we add another number that where we want to keep together. So you would have a four and maybe a two here. Okay, so that's fine. But now let's go on and somehow you realize that two numbers, one is not enough and not own, that it doesn't cover everything. You might need to keep three numbers in the same place. But then you are asked to use just that structure. So now you have, let's say, another uh, number that you want to keep together. And it's, you are forced to use the same data structure. What would you do? You, you have the chance only to, let's say, you have just the chance to only to, to define one single structure and which has two components. And then maybe you decided that this is a pair, you give a name, and this is a pair, and this is like uh, first part, and this is the second part of the pair. Yeah? We can find another structure which includes this structure. Okay, uh, uh, let's make it clear. We don't define, I think this is what you, uh, this is not what you wanted to mean. We don't, we are not allowed to have another data structure. So, for let's define this first place, we will define struct our pair, and this pair has two components, first and second. So that's the only the structure we have. 
Now we want to inst make instances of this thing, but we want to keep numbers inside it. So for two numbers it was okay. We would say okay make pair and keep four and two. That's fine. Now you are asked to keep three numbers inside the structure. Yeah, come on. Again, I can make a pair. Uh -huh. Make pair three and make pair four and two. Yeah, that's exactly one option. Any any other choice? Can we use uh, functions? No, at the moment we are just working on how to organize our data. Okay, but we can add something before we can uh, define helper functions and then we can add uh, mm -hmm. define like we can add the, this function. Uh -huh. the okay. Uh, function, so. What Elif says, how about if you use a helper function? So the the moment we are focusing on, we are just trying to how can we organize our data? Uh, then we don't know what are we going to do with this data. That's why we don't, uh, at the moment, we don't talk about functions uh, immediately. But first of all, let's say if you want to represent such kind of data, but uh, so the, the one option was you said you will have make pair, like a uh, new item for a tree, sorry, and then for the second place, you say I'm going to put. This valid exactly in here, which means you will take this, you are going to create another instance of the same structure, and in the first component, you will replace the tree and you take the old component and put inside the second part. So now you have uh, something like that, and you do have four and two here. Okay, so how about if you had four numbers to store, what would you do? Now you have, we go one, for, one step further. Now it says, oh well, you need to keep four numbers in the same structure. What would you do? How would you organize uh, this thing? And another question, actually another extension. Then, then you realize that, well, not even four, it can be a million numbers even. Four numbers, five numbers, some numbers. You can go, go up to it any number. But you are always forced to use the same structure, yes? So we can make a second like this and make here. No. Yes. Uh -huh. we, can, we can put this four and two instead of this three. So, so you mean you, you will repeat the same pattern again and again. That means if you want to add, want to add, the, add another number, you will take this number, put in the first part of the comp uh, structure, like uh, here, whatever the new number is, and take the ones you have already placed in the second place, the second component. Yes, Ija? I don't know how to uh, write the function, but maybe we uh, define a list and uh -huh. we uh, put our, uh, we, what we uh, huh. put in there mm -hmm. after we call them. Maybe. Okay. Uh, Ija says we can define a list. Uh, but the thing I want trying to get you is the list. You don't, well, and what's the list? So this, the thing is now once we look at our data organization, you will realize that you are generating a list structure. That, that's the point. Actually, we will come to th that point uh, later on. Yeah, Ikema? We can create a self-referential function that yeah. continues producing. Yeah, so that's, the thing is, we can, but first of all, again, let's make sure how we organize our data. So now we have this kind of structure. Now, now we will want to come up more generalization. In this case, what we have done so far, we can represent two numbers, uh, three numbers, and up to many numbers any, any, in any uh, size. Use the same pattern. But the beauty here is we always keep a number in first component and the construction in the second component. So it's very regular, a regular pattern. But now let's move on, look at, cover all different cases. First case is, you want to come up your own data structure, that's the data definition, to be able to keep a set of items in an extendable structure. So this is an extendable structure you, you came up with. So now you should be able to represent how you represent the case where there isn't any item. For instance, we, this is the, we, we want to keep the scores of the students in the classroom 
and if the class, if the student uh, uh, class, I mean, if the classroom is empty, how would you represent this? Yeah, you, you can write anything to represent there isn't any person in the class. So you could say, well, I'm going to use this string called none uh, to represent there isn't anybody in the classroom. So that anything you pick could be uh, enough, but we will see how we can make it generalized and make it really uh, universal for the programming environment we are working on. So now we, have, we are able to represent uh, also an empty list, and if we think this is a list, uh, because we now are keep, we are think, trying to keep, keep the items inside our structure. So how about the, the case where we have a single uh, person? How, and wh what would you prefer? Uh, and again, now we, ha we covered what, how to represent the, if there isn't anybody. How about if you want to keep one single person in, the, uh, in this kind of organization? Uh, with the, uh, in the first part of the structure, we define the, uh, we can insert the note of the student, and in the second part, we can write none. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Thanks, you make my life easier <laughs> at the moment. So we, that means we can go look at that uh, we have an organization here. But we cannot adjust our organization considering this new extension and make things more you know, simple. So what we have done here, uh, what Mujahid suggests is, uh, instead of having, for instance, if the, it was just only three, we would come say, well, I just have three. But you check out, there isn't any other student, so that means here I will place a noun here. For instance, if you want to add, uh, let's say, Three and four. How would you proceed with this structure? With this new adjustment? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gizam, can you repeat it? So you want to place the new item at the head of at the first component, and then all of them together into the second component. So you would have three and none uh, here. So if that's a pretty new uh, but slight adjustment. And now we are able to cover uh, lots of things. So we now we can also put one single item inside this organization, data organization. And besides, we are able to represent uh, that there isn't any student. If you look at the relation, so if you, for instance, you, you, that, that's something you, write, you open up structure, and you open up, you see, oh, there's another package. That means that there is at least one item, one number in this case. If you see, if you open up the second package and you see there isn't, uh, it's a none, that means, oh, it's done, and I don't need to open up anything. So if we just go over and repeat and actually summarize our data organization, we will come up our own uh, data definition for as this kind of uh, data organization. So let's let's do it here. Uh, so now we we can say that this is a this is our own list definition. And uh, let's at the moment we can place any item in these components. But let's say we, we want to keep just the numbers inside this list. So that means we want to define a list of numbers using this uh, organization, data organization. So what we will say, a list of numbers, then you will tell me what I need to say. Uh, a list of uh, number, let's say this is for short, is what? Is, is it structure? Always? Is it always structure? Remember, we wanted to also represent it's empty and we came up with a, uh, with a string which represents there isn't any element in the, uh, in the list. You could use zero, you could use false or something else or any special character or special indication that there isn't any item in the list. Yeah, but how would you keep going? That means your list can be two things. 
It can be a non, that means that which means there isn't anything in the list, or at least one item, which means you, you will come up with the, the data organization, the structure you had. So that means it, it's going to be one of, yeah, either, either it's going to be uh, non, let's say we, we decided to put non for, uh, to represent there isn't anything in the list, or the structure we had. We had. And what was the name of the structure? Pair. It was pair, so that means it might be a pair structure. It should be formed as such. This is the, uh, the way you instantiate the structure. And what kind of things you can put in the first component based on what you have. So always number. How about the second part? Okay, did, oh, uh, it, it's not good I have erased. Actually, if you look at the things, what we have done, for instance, for the first item, we had either another structure, like three and none, or like if you want to just have four here, you would have four and none. So you, you wouldn't be able to see any number, actually. Either it's a pair, or none. So that means in this part you can it will have either a none or a pair, which means you would have a make pair structure here. So that means if you look at make pair, what make pair can be? So it's like it's number again the same thing. But if you look at this one. Does it look something, a pattern is emerging here? Look at the data definition and observe if there's a pattern here. Yeah, if you look at this part, is it what you want to mention? If you look at this one, you are trying to define your list of numbers. And you say my list of numbers can be none to represent nothing, or it can be a structure. And the structure com consists of two components. The first component, I'm always going to keep a number. But in second component, I can place a none or a pair, which go goes back to the same definition we are trying to make up. So in that, you can shortly say, well, this is the thing I'm going to put inside the second one. So we are trying to define list of number. And when we look, follow the regularity of the data organization we had just uh, a couple of minutes ago, we realized that in the second component, we run into the same data type. So that's what we call self-referential data. One component of data is, again, the whole data. Uh, so that's why it's important to recognize such kind or organize such kind of relations. That's what called self-referential. This is self-referencing because now we have a self-referencing here. It's it, it, within the nature. There are lots of uh, self-referential structures. Can you name any? I mean, there are patterns where they the. I mean, the, this is the, the same idea in nature where you have patterns. But when you look at subcomponents in the whole system, you will see the, the whole pattern. Uh, there are many of them. Uh, can you? Yeah, in, yeah, in, in numbers, exactly. That's uh, the, the pattern. But in even nature, I was. Nature number. Yeah, again, it's mathematical. That's where we are already in the abstraction levels. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> so, like. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the same. So it's maybe most generally in mathematical notation, all those things called fractals. Fractal. <laughs> okay, like snow, corn, no, snowflakes. Uh, no, if you take a piece of it, you look at, you see the whole picture, and you know the fjords uh, in uh, Norway. You know, it's again they are, they really repeat uh, themselves. Even sometimes, if you look at a branch of a tree. Uh, or some flowers, you, if you get one trunk, you will see that the same pattern emerges. So this is really repeating thing. And the thing about these structures is they repeat in a smooth and similar and simple way. 
But as a whole, th this organization allows us to be able to store as many as items we want to and we need to store. And that's why w what we have done here, like, you know, imitating uh, these patterns in the nature and mathematics and all those fractals, mathematical notations comes up uh, with, with maybe based on those observations. So that's how we came up with uh, self-referential data. So we done, within the component, within the main the definition, you see the, the whole uh, definition. Okay? So that's, that's important to recognize. But the, the point here is you should be able to un organize your data to come up with simple patterns. Why are we going to do this? Because we want to drive, drive programs. And we should, we should make sure that at what component, what are we going to see? In this case, we will see that if it's a package, in the first component, it's always going to be a number. In the second component, it can be either none or another package. It will be, it will, the, the structure will repeat itself. So this is nice and simple, but it's very efficient uh, to do recursion. So now let's move a step forward, which is the, actually the fun part. Uh, so now we, if you want to write a function, now we, we can feel comfortable about thinking of functions, okay? So now we are, we are going to define a function which consumes a list of numbers. But still, we don't know what the function is going to do. Because we want to write a template for a general function which consumes a list of numbers, okay? So uh, that's why, let's say we, are, we have a function and this is going to consume a list of numbers. At the moment, we don't know what it's going to produce. Okay, so now let's build the template of this function altogether. And okay, my question. Okay, now I'm going to write the header part, and you should think of <laughs> how to complete the template. You don't need anything else to complete the template other than uh, we have discussed so far. It's the same principle. Uh, and last week we even started to give you some hints, in, but it's the same principle. So you should be able to complete a template. A volunteer will get full, flat um, uh, no, mark for quizzes for the rest of the semester. Or you can tell if you don't want to come. Okay. So we will apply the same principle of template. Uh, so if you apply the same principle of the, the, the same principle, you should be able to come up uh, with this, the, the template of the function, uh, even though it's a new type of data organization we have. Yeah, we, now we are, I can sip my tea <laughs> and rest a while. Yeah. I, I'm going to check my inputs. Uh, for that, I need some conditions. Uh -huh. uh, yes. So let's explain this more. So this is correct. We, when we want to design our templates, our focus is to be able to access and make our data ready to go. Uh, so our data, when you check your data, it's list of number and there's a definition. It says that it can be one of them. That's why Kemal thinks, well, that means I need to identify which one of uh, the input is this. So that's why you, you want to come up with the, the condition. Uh -huh. I have two inputs. Uh -huh. I have two inputs. Uh -huh. uh, first, I will check whether it's a noun. Uh -huh. uh, what was the structure? Maybe. You can use strings, whatever the question, proper question is. Strings? Yes. Yeah, string equal to? Uh, I will call a struct, so I need uh, a. But, but you have input long. No. Uh, so you need to check this input, but make sh cl the thing clear. Yeah. Now you have a proper question there. So why didn't you put anything here? This is also something really related to what we do in, in a template. I don't know what I am going to produce. Yeah, and at the moment you don't know what you are, you are going to produce and you don't need to think and try not to think this when you design a template. But the thing is, in this component, when you comp when, well, but you know that it's a, an empty list, so there is no data that you want to open up. 
So that's why you don't put anything else here. Uh, if you had an additional input, maybe you would write uh, uh, selectors if it was a structure. But at the moment, we have a single input, and we know that in this case, it's a, a, an input which represents empty list, and that's fine. We are done with that part of the uh, uh, branch. Yeah, and the second part? I will check whether it's a list of now. What number? Maybe. Okay. Now, in, okay, now let's make sure. Uh, to have a proper uh, syntax over there and also code over there. If it's not none, that means. Else. Or, okay, it's else case, but now no, let's make the question. Uh, uh, yeah. Pair. Yeah, that's it. That's the way we're looking. Because if it's not, it's the, it should be a pair structure. Whether the input is a pair structure or not, that's the thing you need to observe. Okay. Do you think it's finished, the whole template? Well, actually, this is the else part. We don't. We know that either it's one, this case, or the other. Yeah, Vijay. Uh, one moment. Maybe he's going to get the whole. <laughs> maybe he. I don't. I don't know if Kemal needs it. But do you think it's finished? No, because I have uh, two parts of the data set. Yeah, and this is what you want to say? You have to extract the number from that. Yeah, that means because we know that in this case we have a pair structure and uh, we need to extract the things here. So maybe you can erase this part and keep doing uh, the selectors. Pair number? Yeah, it's a, so I, I erase the data definition, but it should be defined struct. Defined struct, let's say pair. And uh, first and second. So that's a, this is the uh, data definition we had. I will check whether it's a number. Then. But look at the data definition. Uh, we, when we do the template, we are just always following the data definition. So what do you need to do now? I will select first pair. Uh, first. Yes, that's it. First of all, you need to extract numbers uh, if you want to extract the first component. Then I will check whether it's number. But can you complete, uh, you should com complete the full, for the pair, yeah, that's the name of the selector function. Yeah. Now, now it's complete, yep. And this is not the only component you might have, you have another component. Yeah, complete it, and we will we will think about what we have there. So, here what you have is what a number. So you can use it. You don't have to bother how to deal with this input anymore. How to access it? You can access it immediately. How about about that one? Now you here we got this thing. At the moment we are now reaching this structure. So what would you do to that means it's still comp that your initial purpose was to open up this structure. And that's why you came up with this template. Now you're ending up the same seeing running into the same structure. So that's the moment where you would take a design decision and I do what? call function again with this component. Yeah. Okay. I will write something like that. Yeah, you, then you are, you, you are complete. That's fine. So, thanks. That's, that's the thing we needed to have. So, you, you got a whole full marks. And we tried as well. And I think someone else here. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, if, we, if I just go over this thing, this is really important. And we need to make, all of us need to make sure what we have done here. So, this part is obvious. We, our purpose is to be able to open up the things and when you look at this one, you know that this is a number structure. 
So in the, for the second component, when you open up the second component, you said it's a pair uh, second for this input, and you realize that at the moment this one is a, a list of number. So that's why we end up the same structure. But as you, ha you might have, uh, rem you know, uh, remember from last week, there was a hint in our design. When we design a template, if we run into a complicated uh, data structure, and the principle is, if it's, I mean, it's an easy one, you can still use the selectors of this data structure and just leave the template as such. But if you look at this one, it's a, again conditional template and then again selectors. And it's not going to end up there. Again conditional templates, again selected. That means you are now having a different, uh, still a diff compound structure. So if you apply simple rule, when you run into a compound structure, which is different or very complicated, you, so you will say, I'm going to design a function who takes going to take care of it. So now, you want to have a function which consumes this structure. Actually, this is the function you are trying to do, which consumes this structure. That's why you came up with the same the idea that, well, it's, bad, it's a good, idea, good thing to have the function uh, which this is going to, then if I'm going to be able to design this function, who takes care of the th this uh, list of numbers, then this, this, sh this, will, this should be the same sort of function. That's how you relate uh, this, re you know, this thing, which is a self-referential, to a recursion over here. So if you compare the data the organization and template organization, it's very mirroring, each, they, are, they are reflecting each other. So in your data organization, you run into the same data structure. In your function organization, your template, when you run into the same data structure, it's a hint that you need to make a, a recursive call. So this is, this is, why it's called recursive call? Because it calls itself. It goes back and uh, gets the, the same thing. Any question? This is really important to uh, make sure that you understand the relation. At the moment, we don't know what are we going to do with this function. Uh, we just have done data organization and reflected this data organization to our template. But you need to make sure how they are related. Any question? Yeah, Elif. Can we use uh, this uh, for first Can we use what? F function. Uh, for, for the first one? Uh, in, the, in the first one, yeah. the first item. Well, it depends on what you are going to implement actually. For, for, from that point on, it will depend on what the f purpose of the function is and what this function is going to produce. But if we want to use like that? Yeah, but here, the purpose of template was to make the things clear and uh, easy to access. At the moment, you made it clear that you can use this uh, number immediately. So then the mission with the template is over for this part. So if you use like that, we can say uh, it's like uh, there can be like two now. If we put before uh -huh. them, I, I mean this uh -huh. part F, uh -huh. so we can, we can use like none and none. Like, uh, right? You mean like putting another F here? But the, the thing is, we don't do things randomly. I mean, putting another function or the same function, this is the function we are trying to decide, the, the, define. And this is the function, is, it's not random. It's not just any function. It's the function we are defining. So that's why we, we have this relation here. We don't put up here uh, the same function because the purpose of the, 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 the contract of this function, at least the input part, says that you need to consume a list of numbers. And what you have here is a number. And, but what you have here is a list of numbers. That's why we were able to do this function, but we didn't have any other things to do. And we don't, we need, we don't need to do anything else. Uh, but once you proceed to implement, to complete the uh, uh, implementation, based on what you do, maybe you can come up with a different helper function uh, for that part.
I mean, do you mean if, how about if I change the place of the things? Yeah, it, there are, but uh, in our data definition, you don't need anything know, else. Know, yeah, you can do, but it depends on your data organization. For this data organization, you don't need anything else. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, Mujai? Can make three. <laughs> yeah, we will see that. Exactly, probably you will see. If we, if, for instance, we, what we have done here, our data organization was as such. We were putting items here, numbers, and putting the all other things in the second part. I was expecting uh, but actually one of you will come with the idea that how about Hojam, let's put uh, some of them here and some of them some of them here and again use these things and just build your data organization uh, using both components at the same time. Yeah, That's possible but if you come up with a regular data organization as such that means you will have this repeating the same structure on left hand side and right hand side. This is binary tree. That means you, in, in a template you would have two recursive calls. That's the case. But for this data, this data definition, we don't need that. So it's important first you organize your data and then based on your data you come up with uh, the template. You, you can have a double recursion only if your data has uh, repeating itself in two different places. Okay, thanks. Uh, any other comments or questions? So now, we, if you don't have, we can start implementing uh, uh, some functions. So one very trivial one is uh, the is if we have a list of uh, numbers which, let's say, represent the scores as we were talking in the beginning, and you want to sum up uh, the scores in the in the in that list that this group can may, may represent the class and we want to sum up the uh, scores in the class. So that means let's organize, uh, use this part. So in this case we, will, we want to design a sum function which consumes a list of number and which produces a number. Okay? Uh, so we will have a function called sum and which has a list of number as an input. Some examples, can you, can you give some examples for, test, for the test cases? So for instance if you had, uh, so that means you can have a num as your input, what would you produce? Zero. It would produce zero. If you had like the make pair uh, two, another make pair, four and none. What would you produce? Six. So you and whatever num item number of items you have, you will be able to sum. You should be able to sum up the things. So that, I think that might be enough. So how would how what, what would you think would be the template of this function? Some function. How should be template of this function? Now we now we have enough. We know the purpose is clear. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the same template because we are consuming the same uh, input. That's why now we can have really we can work on our the, the same structure. But I'm going to organize this part so we'll be able to implement it immediately. So our first. So now I have the function name is sum. Now we have the function which is called sum and it's going to produce a number and yeah this is the function name. I'm just making sure that we use the same th template so we have the uh, pair, pair first parts and we do have uh, pair second part and with this then we realize that we had uh, F here so I'm replacing with uh, sum at the moment. Okay so that's uh, that's the template. So this is a template we have uh, for this function. Now yeah that's better. 
Yeah. Uh, can we add the uh, first one? No, it's zero because we know the producers, if it's not, it's hard to produce now. No, this is as uh, Kemal implies that this is a template. We this that means we need to check them all the time, and list of number can be none or uh, a pair structure. So there is nothing to deal at the moment with whether it's a zero or one or whatever it is. So it's principally it does it shouldn't change anything because. We are reflecting data definition and we have done so and actually we didn't do anything. And maybe we can to, to think, to make things clear since we know it can't be anything else, you can replace this with an else statement. Okay? So the thing is how are we going to uh, complete the implementation? So we have the template at the moment which is the template we have designed before because we use the same data type. Uh, the data definition. So now let's look at this one. So now we are going to focus on how to combine pieces of information we have here. And this is really, really important in recursive functions. When you have data structure organized, you need to interpret and examine what pieces of information are part of uh, expressions you have and what they imply. Then try to use them. That's why never ever try to go run into run writing the recursive functions without considering the template. So if you really go from the template, you will see that you are using the same template over and over again with slight you know, uh, differences. You will be able to implement different functions. And this one is the first example. So now we have this template just borrowed from the earlier design. Now we are going to focus on how are we going to produce the answer. So let's start with this one, which is easy. If Input is a none. What are we always expected to produce? Is that? So that's obvious there. So we will have a zero over here. Now I want you to I want you to interpret what kind of information you have over here. Give them again. <laughs> so this this one is number. How about that one? No, I want. How about that one? What does this expression tells you? Come on. Again yeah, that's that's what you want to mean. The overall, yeah, exactly. This actually, this is if you look at this one, this is really important. It tells you that you have a number here, but you have another number here. How do you know? Someone else should tell me. How do you know that you have a number here in the second part? Yeah, uh, someone else. Be <laughs> Mini. How, how would you say that? Uh, you, you have a number there in the second component. Or maybe the newcomers, our new friends. Well, how would you know that it's a number? Yeah, because our signature tells that this function should produce a number. But how do you relate this with that expression? That, that expression tells that I'm running this function with this input, anyway it should produce a number because this is the signature of the, uh, this is the contract of the function. But it doesn't just tell, so it doesn't just mean that you have a number, it also tells what that number represents. So how would you interpret the result of this function application? What, what do you have over here as a whole? What that number is? Yeah, we can think of think from examples even like if you had, for instance, that's like a short notation for uh, this list of numbers. If that was the initial input, and that will be what? Let's say again, if that was initial input, you would have one here. How about here? What would you have? This is two at the moment. How about this part? What would you have here? Yeah, that means this part is just not a number. It says that take the rest, take the second component and then, yeah, sum them up and find the result for the, the, the numbers in the second component. So that means this function has already, 
this part, this expression has already tells you that it, it, it tells you that it has the answer for all the sum of all the numbers from the second component. There may be two numbers, as this example implies, or there might be one million number, or you know whatever, or maybe just none, empty. But it doesn't matter. We know that from that part we will get the total sum. So that's why in this case you will, this expression will give you that you will have a seven here. So if you have realized we didn't do anything yet to complete the implementation, we are just interpreting and examining the code we, we are left over from the template. And now we have that, I have this first number and I have the sum of the rest of the numbers. How would you combine this? How would you combine this? Someone else? To, to sum up the whole thing, what would you do? Come on. What would you do? You, now you want to, for instance, this is an example. You want to, now you have two here, and this expression gives you seven. How would you find the total, the final answer? Would you? No, come on. That's why you, know, you might be confusing. It, you need to be so straight and believe your eyes what you have here. So what you have here is obvious. This one tells you that you have the first number and this part tells you that you have the sum of for the rest of the list. Yes, Elif? Uh -huh. and uh, we will get a number. Yep, yeah, what mean you like do the addition here? Is it what you mean? So this is a number and this is the sum of the rest of the list. What you would just add them up. This is that simple. So just say plus these two things. Uh, and that's all. Then you have the full implementation. This is really important. What we have done from the template is just these three additions to the template. And it will sum any uh, list with any length. If you organize the list with numbers in first component and uh, structure in the second component. I mean, if your list is organized in that way, this is going to work on any list. This is the first recursion function that you have. I would, it will be a, a much cooler one, but anyway, this sums up the things. So, before the break, I, we will, another question, how about, uh, you wanted to multiply numbers in that list. So, you don't, this is, now we have changed our uh, function contract, oh, no, this is the same, the signature is the same because we want to produce a uh, number, because but now we are going to say we are going to multiply the numbers inside. Now we want to multiply numbers in the list. Before the break, let's make this work. How about if it's none, what would you produce? What won't you produce if it's uh, empty list? Zero. For, yeah, because usually you usually need to get something where, you know, uh, for the multiplication. Yeah, it's the identity elements, like it's, a, it's one. How about this? What is the result of this? What will be the result of this example? It's going to be eight. eight. Okay. How about this one? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Okay. Now we we have a different function. So that I'm going back to original template, but just get having a different function name. So in the original template, we did have, uh, yeah, that was we didn't have anything here. That was the, f not the first selector, and the second selector, and the recursive call. So, and th at the moment, the name of our function is uh, malt. So this is the name of the function, and I have the recursive function call here. But this is my original template. It's, it was easy to manipulate, ma manipulate it. So now how about now producing thing? If uh, list is none. What are we going to produce? One. 
And can someone else tell me what, what these things imply? Yeah. Again, we have the first item, 2. From that part, we would expect that this function is going to work. Believe it, that this is work, it is going to work. This, have to, this is what you have to do. <laughs> this is a function you are going to complete this and the design for it. But believe in yourself that this is going to work. That if it's going to work, it should produce you the multiplication of the rest of the numbers. In this case, it should be 12. And then what would you do if you have done everything clear? Then you would multiply the first one and the second uh, component. So again, the same simple change. You would have multiplication. <coughs> oh, that's all. Did you see how it becomes easy if you reflect your data organization to your template, and then it's you are so easy to you know come up with uh, recursive functions. You don't need to be an advanced programming level to be able to do recursion. The only thing that matters is how you organize your data and how you reflect your data to your organization. Uh, and and the, 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 the mean to get there is the template. And once you have the template, you should always read, interpret what kind of information you have. Okay, so we will do more examples in the second part. Let's trace uh, the recursive function. So, I mean, I know some of you may, might feel that how it works. I mean, you may feel it's, it, it shouldn't work in a way, uh, but we didn't do things so explicitly to make it work. But how it happens to work is not that uh, difficult. You can use the step function on, uh, on Dr. Rocket, so you can go step by step and uh, examine. But let's say, let's see, let's trace, let's cold walk uh, this piece with a simple uh, uh, example. So let's say we want to run malt uh, with a list uh, of numbers, uh, which is make pair, uh, like two, make pair three and another make pair here is like, can I make it shorter? So I don't have space here. So let's say we have, this is two, three, four as the input. But make sure that you have the make pairs to form them, okay? Later on you will be able to use this uh, short notation to be able to uh, represent lists. Uh, but then, if you start with this one, uh, what would you get? How would you go? So now let's do the cold walking together. At the moment we have make pair two, make pair three, make pair four, and none. And now we will come here, we will ask this question. Uh, what will, what was the result of this question? False. False, then we will come. In else case, we will see there's an expression here. So we would open up the expression, the multiplication, and then the result of this expression tells that you need we are extracting the first number, which is two. And we come here, it says it's it's a function call, a function application here. That means at the moment we have malt, uh, we will have this three and four. For, for, for the, as the input. So, so it means we have make pair three, make pair four and empty. So if you, that means in order to complete the multiplication we need to find the answer for this function call. So it's a mod, that means we go all the way back, that means, uh, and we we'll see and ask the same question, it's called, uh, we, how, how, how is this false? Again, we will run into the same multiplication expression. Uh, we will have, uh, what's the first item? We extract three. And then we get, we again has a multiplication expression. This time it's just make pair four and none. So it's just four at the moment in here. So we go back again and check this one. It's again false and end up the same expression, which is multiplication. Uh, so we will have mod 4 and 
malt? No. None. Yeah. Yeah, answer is true, and the result will be 1. So from this one, you will get a 1 here. 4 times 1 is 4. You will get a 4 here. 3 times 4 is 12. Uh, from 12, you will get 24 as the output. So this is how uh, a recursive function calls. So you op usually Look like this is a regular recursion function. We will do, uh, implement more efficient ones. So wh what we do, we go and open up the data, uh, then run into a base case where we know the answer immediately, and then sum up the things and come back to, you know, uh, go back and complete the, the thing. So I think in a discrete math part, you have seen something very similar. What is it? Which uh, a mathematical uh, process in 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 Pnar's lecture? I'm sure you have done. So it's like it's an induction in a way. So it's an induction process. So in, in you compare the induction process and with one this one now this this one of the case this is a trivial case. This is a really trivial case where you have a simple input and in this case you you do you have the answer immediately. Otherwise. Since it's a self-referential data, you want to open up the things and then you do the recursion over and over again. So that's, uh, that's one thing. So any question? Now, do you believe that this was working as you were expected? So one suggestion. When you design recursive functions, don't try to cons you know, deal with immediately how are you going to you know, combine things in recursive steps. This is the hard part, and usually it's not easy to get uh, and come up with a good answer. So it, it's always best to go from your template and interpret your template. Based on interpretation, which means you will see what kind of what pieces of information you have, where, what's going to be recursive call of that part of the uh, uh, data, and then try to combine things. So it's really simple and easier and straightforward. Otherwise, it will be more, a lot more complicated. You know, it takes even so much time to you know, do the things for three items. And you don't need to do this in order to be able to design uh, the whole thing. So you once make sure that you have a good data organization. And then reflect this data organization to your template. Everything will be straightforward. So let, let's do some more exercises uh, on, on, on the same template. How about we have a list of numbers. I uh, want to uh, multiply every element by 2 in this list. Did you get the uh, purpose of the function? At the moment, now we are going to, we have a list of numbers. We want to multiply every element in this list by 2, which means we can, that means we need to give example, of course, to be able to make things clear. So um, I can. Raise this part from this point. I believe that uh, you have everything clear about connection between data definition and the template. So in this case, uh, we do have, uh, let's say, a list of numbers, let's say two, three, and four. The output should be. Everyone is multiplied by two. It's like four, six, and eight. OK? So this will, this will be an example. If it's uh, none, then we will have a none again, of course. OK? So this will, this will be a simple case. Uh, so now let's say we want to go back to our original template. We will change the function name accordingly. So we do have. In original template, we should have a function. So this is the first item. And uh, let's have function name will be double db. And this is db. Yeah. OK. Now, now, now let's complete the implementation. Who want to? What should be the output? None. None. Because we want, 
again, in this case, oh, we, we didn't make sure what should be the, the contract. What should be the output of the thing? It's, it's list of number again. Now we will have a noun here. How about this part? And the second case. Someone in the back seats. Can, can, can you first of all uh, it, tell me what interpret information you have here in first place? Let's interpret the information here and then try to combine it. Any? Brock? Can you tell us what do you have at this part of the code? <laughs> Again, you have the first item, and what, what do you have from here? What, what this function, the, what in, the, this recursion call imply? You should make sure what it implies here. If not? What this implies to you in, in this case? Yeah? So, I mean, if, yeah, it implies, yeah? So, let's say if the, that was your initial input, two, three, and four. And that will be, and you would have, what would you have here? You would have a two here, and what would you have as a result of this part? So now, now this, the, the here you would have a two, but what will be the output of this thing over here? Is it multiple of two? How, like, can you tell me more explicitly? A number or what? So what, what's the data type of the thing we will get from that part? Yes, it, <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, it's going to be a pair. Uh, it's going to be a list, actually. It can be none as well. It can be a pair or none. But if this is the, let's say, if that was the initial input, uh, what will be the output? We didn't design the function, complete the design of the function. But actually, we have loads of things. We are almost done. And we can assume that we will get a proper answer from this part. And we need to make sure what this proper answer is. OK, can you give me more explicitly? If, uh, yeah, thanks. You will have six. And eight out of this thing. So if we want to make it more clear, actually, we need to make it more clear because we are using a data structure. So we'll have make a pair six and make pair uh, was it eight and none for this part. So this is what you would get once uh, you uh, have this function. So how would you combine it? Multiply the pair plus two and... Oh, first multiply the number by two. Now you have doubled the first item as well, and then? Make pair. And then make pair. Uh, This item and whatever yeah, comes from the other part. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what you would do. Again, we use the same template because we are using the same data. Uh, and we, once we look at the, in, you know, the, the template and information you got from the template, it's really straightforward. Okay, let's do one last exercise then go to see how this is implemented uh, in Dr. Rocket. I mean, how we uh, design those kind of things in Dr. Rocket. Now, let's say if you want to extract all the numbers from a given list. So in this case, uh, let's, say, let's go back to our, again, our original, uh, uh, maybe I should have the template. Let's go back to initial template. Uh, we would have, we don't know what to do at the moment, and, and let's change the function names. 
So we, this time we want to keep the old numbers in a given list. We, that means we, we want to filter out old numbers uh, in a given list. So it's like old is the name of the function. And what should be the output data type? Again, this is a signature. Uh, for instance, in this case, what will be the output? Three. Just three. That means we would have make pair uh, three and none. Okay. So it's a, uh, and again, if it's none, as again, well, the output will be none. Okay, now let's complete uh, the implementation. This one again produces a none. It's really inefficient. I have been using so much stuff for a single line where I'm always putting none or zero or one and doing lots of things in a single line. Uh, anyway, so, so we will have a none here. And then how about this case? I, I think this is not just a class of four or five people, is it? I, want, I need more response and I, so I can make sure that you really follow from everyone. You know? Look at, you know, look at here and tell us what we have here. Again, it might sound really very stupid since I'm repeating the same thing, but it's really the thing that you will do. I'm not, you will do stupid things, you will do the smart thing because you will have your template. Every time you will have a different perspective because every time you will, you will have a different purpose and a different function. So then you would interpret the pieces of data and part of answer you would have here. So uh, that's why before running into completing the things, it's always good to make sure what do you do have here. <coughs> so no, no, before just th telling us what to do, just can you tell us what was, what is the, uh, what, what, can you tell us the, what kind of information we have, what they imply? Uh, for instance, what do you have here? Uh, again, you can uh, take this as an example. Again, you will have the first item as usual, okay? Uh, as a two. And how about from that part? Three and four? I mean, you mean this part or? The whole thing. I mean, I was asking the whole thing. What will be the output of the whole thing? Our purpose is to extract odd numbers from, from this list. We want to keep the odd numbers. We just have three here. In this case, if this is a thing, in the end we will just get a tree, nothing else. So the output of this part should be make pair three and none. That's all. So that, why, why is it so? This tells you that you are extracting odd numbers for the rest of the list, which means we were for the second, in the second compartment. And how, then what do you need to do? What, how would you do? How would you combine the things? But in this case it's two, but if you had, for instance, uh, not two, but one as the first item. In this case, you would have a one here. So how would you combine the things here? So you have almost uh, everything, but you need to decide what? Yeah, yeah we need to do a pair of things. So if that's all, first, if it's a one, then you would put in, you know, add this into this filtered out list. But it's, if it's two, then you don't need to do it, and you don't have to do it. So what would you do to be able to complete this thing? Yeah, you would check just if this is, a pro this is, if this is the proper 
uh, item that I want to keep or not. If it's the, one, the item that you want to keep, you would keep it. Otherwise, you would leave and just use the answer coming from recursion. So that means here you would have, uh, first of all, you would say, well, I need to check uh, if uh, the first item, which we had before, uh, if, the, if, if the pair, what is the first long, is equal to, or is if whether it's odd or not. So there's a built-in function, for instance, you can use it. You will say, if this is odd or not. If it's odd, that means you need to keep it. That means you need to add it as the first item in your building up uh, things. Because you know that this part has brought you the answer, and you would add, if it's true, then you would say, well, then I will, I'm going to make pair. Uh, the, 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 the thing you had, the, the, this one, pair first, loan, and you would pair this with the answer coming from recursion. And answer coming from recursion was uh, odds uh, pair rest list of number. Yeah, I think, is it okay? Yeah, now this yeah, then that will be, we had, in the else case, if it's false, no. what, will, what would we do? If it's, if it's false, what are we going to do? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> <laughs> but the, what is the false? The false is, I mean, the thing, it tells us that the first item is not, at the old, that means I'm not going to keep the first item. But we know that from recursion, we have the answer for the rest of the items. That means we need to keep, use the answer, which is we are going to use this part only. We're not going to add this item. So that's why we will have uh, just odds uh, make pair. Uh, yeah, pair rest. Pay rest or seconds. I think it's second, as have written as it was second, pair second, uh, list of number. We need what? Can we construct? I don't know, it's so, so. Yeah, we can. Uh, you can construct. Let's make an example if it's possible. For instance, if uh, you had this thing as the input. Let's trace this. So 2, 3, 4, it's not uh, none. Then we'll come to this one and we'll check the extract the first item, 2. The fir is the first item an odd? No. So we are going to run this part. It means we are going to run. Shall, shall we do all together? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you might be. <coughs> this is yeah. odds. Ah, we, d we don't need to make a white. Uh, I don't need this at all. Yeah, I didn't. I don't need this at all. Uh, because I know. Yeah, I don't know why. Probably I was thinking something else. It's completely wrong. I need to just have uh, pair. Uh, Second list of number. That's it. I need. That's, is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why we? Why did we use this way? Because if we use uh -huh. the other way. Uh, what, what's the other way? I mean, uh -huh. you delete. Huh. Uh, uh -huh. Last one. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, if, we, if we add uh, all the first one to first one. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, I mean, uh, why do we use uh, conditions? Uh, you mean this expression? Yeah, because 
Huh? I guess uh, with last expression we can do it. We can do something. Uh, th th actually, what they have deleted was totally wrong. I, it was completely wrong uh, because I didn't need I didn't to need to make pair at, at that place. So n n let's let's go over it again. So we have our first item. And we check our first item. This is what we had from our template. We check whether this first item is odd or not. If it's odd, then we need to use this first item. Keep it in the list. That's why we say make pair, to be able to keep it in the list. How do we? So that means we are going to keep in the list, and we know that this recursion call will produce the proper answer for the rest of the list. And by adding this one into the, uh, the structure, now we are done. That's fine. If the first item is not odd, we, are, we don't need to keep it. We should actually extract it out. We are, we, that means we are, we are not going to consider it at all. We are going to use whatever answer comes from the recursion. So that's why this part will tell us what the output of the recursion is, and that's, that's what we are going to use. All of the alts. So we can, I guess we can use other way too. Because if there is a, like, if there is a. I one, think she said we, did, we do not need to give an, yeah, another yeah. else case. We yeah. can only write as alt in else case the previous else case. This, like. Yes, else alt pair first. If ah. it's true, yeah, make pair. Right. But the thing is, uh, of course, you can imp uh, improve this one. Uh, if you're, it's, if you're in this part, it's for sure that you have, uh, you, you, you have an, an item here. But the thing is, this structure reflects our structure of our data definition. That's why I am not trying to confuse them. If it is, it's what you, you, you know, what's your question is. So I'm not confu I don't, I'm not going to mix them up. The, this question here, if this if else case is about the value of an item. But this one is about whether the what is about data type of the item. Uh, yes. Söylemek istediğini yaz bakayım. <gülüyor> Sili de bilirsin. Sili de bilirsin. Anladın mı Kemal benim sorumu? Yok sen sil. Hocam videoda çıkıyor. Yok. Hocam şimdi böyle dedik ya. Şimdi buna pay e, first diyeceğiz. Aha. Sonra burada işte birincisi olacak. Aha. Tamam. Bir olsa da alacak ee, ya da almayacak. Yok. Anladım. Niye biz ifi kullandık burada? Uh, you have confused. This is the name of the function. It's my fault, maybe. Uh, because this is name of the function we are writing. But this one, where is it? Uh, yeah, that, that one is a built-in function. Okay, we can check. So that's, that is a, that's a built-in function. You can say take. Yeah, that's the. So let's. If you want to do something different, totally. I mean, that if this is what you want to ask, actually, if this odd or this is the built-in fun function, then you are messing up with the organization of data. It's okay if you are going to complete and use we'll come up with the efficient thing. So you can you, again you, you could instead of else case, you could do something like that. But this doesn't reflect the organization of your data, if you, it's what you want to ask. So, uh, if you say, well, that's then the first, uh, the, the, the first item in the pair. Or the same of the product, the right Then, that means, if it is, actually it's nothing so different, just you, you confuse the structure of data. That if you ask this immediately, then you say if it is the odd number, 
It's exactly the same thing. Just we now we have more, uh, that, that now I'm going to keep it. So you will say make pair, uh, keep this one, the, this item, the first item, pair first. And uh, the answer which comes from the recursion, which is odds is the name of the function I'm designing. And, and the input for that function is the rest of the thing, which is uh, pair second list of number. So this is what we had as the true case for the if statement. And again, that means you, are, you need to look at the other case, where the first item is not odd. So then you will just use odds uh, pair uh, second. So the, if this is, this is completely, in, in, in implementation it's nothing different. But the, the problem with this thing is, this doesn't reflect, this organization does, then it's, you have confused value, looking at the value of input and the structure of the data. So, and in terms of performance, even it's not very significant, different. So it shouldn't, I mean, it's best to keep the main template which reflects data structure. And then, if you want to come up with different uh, conditional checks, use them within the branches. So you, if you want to change things and improve the things, it will be easier to spot what you need to do. Uh, now we have increased three branches. It's, before we had two branches, an additional question. Actually, again, it's the same number of uh, questions you have. So it doesn't make the difference in terms of in your implementation. Okay, now, uh, any question? Maybe we should trace, do you think we need to trace this one? Uh, to see how it, how it works on, uh, like, that we, you might have been confused how it works if there's one, more than one uh, odd item. Okay, okay let's give an example and uh, go and check how it works. Like, four and five. So this is, for instance, an, a single case where you have more than one odd items. But I would, instead of this one, I will go back, say this is the else case to be able to reflect my uh, data definition and use this if statement instead. See, it's not different. I, I just erase the things and written, have written this back. Okay? And I don't have this else, this one anymore. Okay? So now I still keep uh, the data organization in my uh, design. And it's as uh, simple to uh, go with and it's, it's uh, nice to uh, organize. Now let's check this one. If uh, the first item, it's not, it's not, it's not a non, it's the, is it an odd number? Yes. That means I'm going to implement this part. That means I'm going to take one and recurse on, the set, on that part. So from that one, two is not uh, odd, uh, so I'm not going to keep it. I'm going to implement, just look at the answer. That means I'm going to just immediately look whatever answer comes from that part on. Now we have three. I will keep three, writing, running on this part, and then uh, going to recursion, I, I will have these two left. Four, I will skip. I will go with this item. It's five, I will keep it. I will go with none. When none comes, I will return none and that will complete my whole answer. So the always, if you keep in mind that, or organize the things you have here. Don't try to focus on exact examples. Examples will, should help you how it works, but always keep looking at the template and what kind of information you have at the template. Otherwise, you might confuse it. That's the point. Okay, come on. If I don't have none after five, uh, I will not have I think, at the time rate condition. It will yeah. again self referential. Yeah, and then the infinite loop. Yes. That will be an infinite loop. That will be an infinite loop. If, I do, if we didn't have a non case here, uh, that will keep in, uh, no, 
in an infinite loop which is pretty much a uh, bug we have in the recursive functions. Uh, any other question? So we can stop here and uh, see you next week. <laughs>